Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your cell phones off to the press conference. All cell phones off, please. Not on standby. All cell phones off, please. Thank you. <laughs> Trying to be relaxed whilst I'm with you. <clears throat> right, good morning. Um, pleased to announce that I presided over perhaps the shortest meeting of the Security Council I've uh, attended in my two years here this morning when we adopted the programme of work. Um, I think I spoke for four or five minutes, but nobody had anything else to add. So we adopted the program of work and we adjourned. So uh, the, um, let's hope that that sets the tone for a relatively uh, uncontroversial uh, month. Um, I hope you have copies before you, yes, most of you seem to, of the uh, uh, approved version of the program of work. Um, I thought it would be helpful just to run through some elements uh, of it. Um, let me say, first of all, the debate tomorrow on UN peacekeeping operations is an opportunity for us to draw together the threads of the initiative that the UK and France launched uh, six months ago in January um, uh, to uh, uh, look again at the way in which the Security Council uh, exercises oversight and management of peacekeeping operations. There's been a good deal of discussion and debate and some hard work done in the Secretariat and by member states, and we believe we'll be in a position tomorrow to adopt a presidential statement at the end of the debate, pulling together the various threads of uh, the initiative. This is going to focus on a number of areas, um, all linked to the St Security Council's strategic oversight of peacekeeping. The focus will be on better scrutiny and uh, evaluation of the mandates to ensure that they are achievable and deliverable, uh, better consultation and dialogue with troop contributing countries uh, who are the ones of course on the ground who have to carry out uh, the mandates uh, adopted in the Council, um, uh, looking at the whole question of the challenges faced by peacekeepers on uh, protection of civilians, uh, which is increasingly uh, a prominent feature of peacekeeping uh, operations. Um, this is not going to be the conclusion of the initiative on peacekeeping. We'll be pointing forward to uh, further areas of work um, which uh, we hope will be taken forward in the next uh, six months uh, or so. Um, and the ideas that we're discussing are not uh, hugely new. Um, uh, many of them will be familiar to you, those of you who have been here for some years. Um, uh, they revisit ideas from uh, the Brahimi report, from Agenda to, uh, for Peace, um, uh, uh, and from other debates in the Security Council. But uh, the fact that these ideas come forward again show that there is a problem on s consistent implementation of, um, uh, of uh, better management of peacekeeping, uh, and that's what we're hoping to um, uh, achieve through our um, uh, uh, work and the conclusion of tomorrow's debate. I would secondly uh, point you to the adoption this afternoon of a resolution on children and armed conflict. This has been uh, uh, steered through the Council by our Mexican colleagues who have taken the informal lead on, um, on this issue, working very closely with uh, Radhika Kumaraswamy, the uh, uh, Secretary General Special Representative uh, for the subject. Um, the main point of this resolution this afternoon is in operative paragraph 3, uh, and the, uh, uh, what that provision says is that the trigger criteria for uh, uh, listing parties to armed conflict which are in breach of uh, uh, Security Council uh, concerns will be expanded beyond just the uh, forcible recruitment of children into armed groups and armed militias, and will now also include engagement in patterns of killing and maiming of children, or in rape and sexual violence committed against children. <laughs> so this broadens the basis under which uh, armed groups can be cited and named uh, uh, under the provisions of the Children Armed uh, Conflict um, uh, 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 resolutions of the Council. This fits quite neatly with the uh, report uh, we'll be debating on Friday, 
this was originally scheduled for Thursday, it's been rescheduled for Friday because of um, uh, one or two uh, uh, people scheduling difficulties for Thursday. Um, the debate is now going to be on, th on Friday about the uh, uh, Women, Peace and Security and in particular the Secretary General's report following up the uh, advance we made in June last year uh, on uh, or captured in Resolution 1820, uh, which among other things uh, 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 included systematic uh, sexual violence um, as a war crime uh, and was an important step forward then. So uh, that will be on Friday. Um, uh, let me also mention Iraq. Uh, we will be looking at two separate issues on Iraq uh, this month. First, we're having a briefing uh, this afternoon from the Secretary General's new Special Representative, Ad Melkert, whom we all know from his previous job at UNDP. Uh, he will be briefing in particular on the mandate of the UN mission uh, in Iraq, which is up for renewal by the end of this, month, uh, end of this week. Uh, we don't expect that to be particularly controversial, and work is well advanced on, uh, on concluding that. The second area, and it's noted in the footnotes of the uh, program of work, relates to um, Resolu Resolution 1859, uh, in which uh, the Council asked for a report on the outstanding obligations on Iraq um, under what has become known as the Saddam era resolutions. Um, uh, this is quite a complicated piece of work uh, because quite a, a number of uh, uh, obligations were placed on Iraq uh, following the 1990, uh, their 1990 war with uh, Q uh, well invasion of Kuwait uh, and subsequent eviction. Um, and uh, from the various obligations on Iraq on weapons of mass destruction. Uh, this is an opportunity now to uh, work to try to uh, uh, progressively uh, uh, remove those, um, uh, those constraints on Iraq, uh, uh, but it will require some, uh, uh, some careful preparation, some consultations with all the main parties and amongst members of the Security Council. So um, uh, that is work which is now starting but don't hold your breath, it may take a, a, a little while before it comes to, comes to fruition. Um, I think the last thing to point to uh, for this month is uh, uh, the range of Middle Eastern issues. We've got our regular debate on the 19th. Um, uh, well, it's a briefing in the, in the chamber and then consultations on the Middle East. And then, um, more substantively and specifically, we have the mandate of the UN Interim Force in Lebanon to, uh, to uh, renew by the end of the month. Um, uh, so that's about it on the work program. There will be a number of other issues that the Council will be taking forward. You'll see in the footnotes we mentioned Myanmar, uh, the uh, uh, elections in, sorry, not the elections, uh, getting myself confused. Um, uh, the situation in Myanmar where the focus is on the trial of Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, which we're expected to come to an end uh, in a week's time. Um, uh, and the Council may wish to reflect on that. Uh, and on the 20th of uh, uh, August is the date for the elections in Afghanistan, and again, the Council may wish to reflect uh, on that uh, after the uh, event. So those are the main things to mention, and I'm very happy to take any questions. Yes, madam.